Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this pistol that you see in my hand and that you saw throughout the intro. This is the Beretta 92 series, but this one's a little bit different as you probably have already guessed for those of you guys who are very familiar with the M9 92 series of gun. This one here is the Elite LTT and it was designed by Ernest Langdon. So for those of you guys that don't know who he is, uh, quick background on him. He was a Marine. He's a championship shooter in multiple disciplines, but one thing that differentiated him early on uh, versus a lot of the other uh, competitive shooters out there was that he used a 92 series pistol. Uh, back then, of course, most folks were using 1911, some CZ variants, other race guns like that. Uh, and he was out there rocking the Beretta 92. It caught Beretta's attention, of course, because he was winning with it. Uh, became sponsored by them, actually worked with them for a while, uh, and still works with them, I guess, to this day, because this pistol is a factory Beretta pistol, the one that you see right here. However, uh, Langdon Tactical offers some upgrades and modifications beyond what you get here with this base package, which we'll get into a little bit later on. But he sort of is known as uh, kind of like the guru, the wizard of the 92 series. And I would tend to agree with that. Um, he worked with Wilson Combat. He was brought in to uh, train their folks on how to do the customization that they do. So really industry-wide, he's very, very well respected in terms of his knowledge and modification of the 92 series pistols. So I guess we'll get into uh, what we have here sort of on the base level and then get into the details. So we have of a Vertec uh, style slide, which is important because that gave uh, them the ability to change out the front and the rear sight. Prior to that, I believe it was only the other uh, Brigadier slides that had the ability to do that before the Vertec came out. So if you guys want night sights, that is an option. But as it comes from the factory, we get the fiber optic front sight and then the uh, square notch rear here, which is excellent. It has a nice ledge there for uh, self-defense type use. If you need to do one-handed manipulations and those sorts of things, you can do so. And then we have the serrations there on the rear. Fantastic sight, nothing to complain about. And then down here on the grip, this is an M9A1 style grip. And uh, for those of you guys that know the difference there, that is going to give you uh, back strap checkering as well as front strap checkering. So that's good. And it also gives you a good bevel there on the magwell. Getting into the details, we'll start down here at the grip and sort of work our way up for some semblance of order as I typically do. The pistol does ship with three 15 round magazines for those of you guys that are in band states. It does have a 10 round option, so that is good. The grips here are the LTT Elite uh, G10 grips. I believe they're made by VZ and they're ultra slim. Uh, so one of the big problems that a lot of folks have with the 92 series, particularly if you're using the M9A1 frame, is that they say the grip's too big and uh, these definitely reduce the circumference by a good bit compared to a standard 92 series pistol that said for me i have relatively large hands as many of you who subscribe to the channel know i talk about it often and for me these might be a little bit too thin but what i really do like about them especially in conjunction with the front strap checkering here that we have is that they have a good um, bit of aggressiveness to them and it helps the pistol stick in your hands. Uh, I've been shooting this pistol since winter time so it was on some days out there in Carolina like 20 degrees and then I've shot it in over triple digit heat so in all the different conditions it definitely stayed put which is exactly what you want so I do like that on the grips but grips are always kind of a personal preference kind of thing so it really just depends. Uh, we do have an oversized magazine release button that's one thing that I'm not a huge fan of. However, what I like about this one is it's not gigantic. It's not like a gigantic competition one. So I've never accidentally bumped it and had a mag drop free, um, which is exactly what you want. So that is good there for that. Um, one thing that's a subtle difference on these guns versus other 92 series guns, and there's two of them, but one of them is right here on the trigger guard. So they actually bevel and relieve a little bit of the trigger guard on the edges here. And what that does is it prevents, for those of you guys who have shot a lot, prevents you from getting what's called the Glock knuckle most commonly because they're the pistols that tend to cause it the most. But the 92 series pistol will do it as well if you are out on the range for a long extended period. Uh, you definitely can get some sort of abrasion on there and then a blister and then all kinds of other stuff like that. So it does alleviate that. It's one of the small touches that goes into this pistol that you just don't see on a lot of the other ones there. And then you guys can see the uh, trigger guard goes up and it has that little front ledge that the M9A1 does. So for those of you guys who like to kind of keep your finger up there, you can do so and get some leverage and torque on there uh, from that. Uh, continuing on forward, we do have a 1913 rail on there. So any of your lights, lasers, etc., that you do want to use will work perfectly fine on this pistol. Moving on up to the slide, we do have another unique thing on this pistol versus other 92 series guns, and that is that they relieved the back end here of the slide and they kind of smoothed it out 
so that way there's those sharp edges on there. Now what's that for? That's for folks who have really large hands, bigger than mine, um, and they get slide bite from the 92 series of pistols. That is gonna prevent that in almost every case I can think of because it's very smooth, and like I said, there's actually a relief cut on it as well. So again, if you want to go out and shoot all day long uh, with a Beretta 92 series, that's definitely gonna be a good thing for a lot of folks out there. The hammer is the skeletonized style hammer. There's a few different styles out there for the 92 series. This one I think looks good and uh, I'm not sure anyone's really too mad about it. It does come in the G configuration. So for those that don't know what that means, it means that our safety lever here actually isn't a safety lever. It's simply a decocker only. So regardless of which side you hit it from, when you push down on it, it will decock the pistol, sending it back into double action mode. We'll get into the trigger here in just a second. And then when you release it, it goes right back into the fire position. So you can't accidentally put this pistol on safe when you want it to be on fire. That's one of the things that a lot of people really don't like about the 92 series and the G conversion fixes it. However, if you want to put the standard uh, safety on there, you can, you can swap it out and throw that on there for those of you guys who like that for whatever reason, but it doesn't come with that from the factory, it comes like this. Now, one of the downsides of that is that here on the right side of the pistol, the lever does stick out a little bit more than it does on the left side. Now, some folks have expressed concerns about printing out when carrying, not sure how big of a deal it is, but it does stick out a little bit further if that is something that you're concerned with. Uh, continuing on forward, we do have the rear slide serrations that come standard on the Vertec, but we do have front serrations as well. Previous to this, uh, to the best of my knowledge anyway, the only production Berettas that came uh, from the factory were the Elite Series with front serrations. And I believe uh, Ernest Langdon had uh, something to do with the design of a couple of those along the way over the years as well. But it does have those front serrations for those of you guys that dig that. Our target, our pistol rather, that comes with a target barrel is what I was attempting to say. This one here is stainless steel. It does have the target cut there on the front and it's a little bit shorter than your standard 92 series as well so it got a little bit more of a flush fit there out on the end before we get into the trigger i just wanted to show you guys it is unloaded so we're good to go on that decock it and again start out in double action mode and the double action on this really is one of the major things that makes this pistol in my opinion i should point out before uh, getting into it is that this pistol is again the base configuration of it so uh, they actually offer a version with an upgraded uh, trigger package on there now this one has a standard trigger job whatever that is uh, from Ernest over at uh, Langdon Tactical and it's excellent uh, the double action pull is right around seven and a half pounds on my scale the single action breaks right at four and a half um, but the big difference in the double action is that there's like no stacking at all it straight rolls through super super smooth and I guess I'll do it with my left hand so you guys can kind of see it there but I mean, you can pull this thing straight through. There's not a lot of, again, stacking, like steps, parts that are faster than the other, parts that are slower, easier, harder, etc. It's essentially 7.5 pounds the whole way. So with a double action trigger, one thing you wanna do is you wanna roll through the trigger. Um, a lot of guys have a tendency to sort of ambush it and jump it or prep it, wait to the break, and then break the shot, which is fine, but that costs you a little bit of time. If you have a smooth trigger like this and you're you know, a proficient shooter in DASA mode, what you wanna do, my opinion anyway, I guess you guys could argue that below down in the comment section, is roll through it consistently. And a trigger that doesn't have a lot of staging allows you to do that much more easily. So uh, double action, fantastic for sure. I should also point out guys, that all the trigger components on this are switched over to the metal components. So some of the Berettas uh, these days are coming with some plastic components mixed in. This pistol has none of those. It also has no MIM parts at all, so just for those that are interested in that as well. So again, that is a double action trigger. Of course, the slide will cycle and you will then be in single action. At this point, it's excellent as well. We do have a little bit of play in there as most DASA guns have. Once we take that slack up, get to the wall, very crisp break right there and uh, cycle it again. Good reset, audible tactile. Get right back to the break. The trigger on this pistol is fantastic. I would love to know what one is like with the trigger job because it's excellent. I believe they have the Wilson style, style trigger rather um, that has a little bit of less over travel on the trigger job one and I'm sure some other stuff too. Uh, definitely check out the link below if you guys are interested in that info. It also has a stainless uh, guide rod in there as opposed to the polymer one. And now I'm not a huge 
proponent either way of polymer or stainless in terms of guide rods. Both of them work just fine. There's a lot of Glocks out there, really, really high round count that use the polymer the whole time, but a lot of guys like the steel as well. I think both work, uh, but on this one with the two-tone option there that it kind of has with the barrel and the guide rod, I think it looks good. Speaking of two-tone, they also offer a version over at Landing Tactical that has all of the uh, components on this, the moving components, um, essentially anything that moves and can be dropped in that you see on the outside with a nickel-based finish on there. It really gives you a nice two-tone pop on there. Of course, as it is with the trigger, the grip screws, the barrel, and the guide rod, it still has a little bit of that, but if you want even more, they do offer that. Just a few other things I wanted to touch on before we close the video out as we are losing light pretty quickly out here. Uh, number one is reliability. This pistol has been 100% reliable with any ammo we put through it. And normally for pistol videos, I shoot somewhere in the 600 to 900 round range. This one, uh, like I said, I've had it in since the winter. So uh, I put a lot of rounds through this. I put about 1500, which is more than normal for my pistol reviews. And it's had, again, zero malfunctions of any kind. Uh, in terms of accuracy, I put some gold dots through it, 124 grain plus peas, put it on a rest, 25 yards, and it shot two inches just over it, like 2.1 inches. Um, and that's with me behind it. I'm sure with a ransom rest and maybe different types of ammo, it could probably shoot better than that. I don't doubt it. Brenda 92s, I've said this for years, people, jump on me in the comment section but 92 series are some of the most accurate pistols out there um, but people think they're inaccurate generally speaking because they're using you know military ones that are all messed up from years of abuse and or people who shoot them simply can't shoot well or a combination thereof but the Breda action on the 92 series is very very accurate for sure another thing it's good at just as a side note is it's a very good suppressor host of course this one doesn't have a throttle barrel but if you're looking for it uh, you can drop one in there and it is a very good suppressor host because of the way the action works there um, in terms of cost cost on this one for what you get in terms of competitive options out there on the market is really good so the base model i think right now is starting at 999 dollars and again there will be a link down below in the video description but for all the stuff you get especially considering what a Beretta 92 costs, just a standard one, like an M9A1 or something like that. I think it's very competitive. You get the upgraded size, upgraded trigger, all the things that we already talked about, the relief cuts where they need to be, you get good grips, magazine, all those sorts of things that go into it and Ernest Langdon working his little wizardry on it. Um, excellent gun for sure. And the fact that Beretta is putting this out as a production gun rather than something that is modified uh, really speaks volumes to what Beretta thinks of uh, Mr. Langdon's input on the pistol as well. There's, as, to the best of my knowledge, no one else that they do that with. So uh, there is that. Again, if you guys have any questions on the pistol, anything we talked about here in the video, you can always post those down below in the comments section. However, if you have a question that you absolutely need answered, definitely uh, reach out to me over at my Facebook page. That is where I respond to all the messages that I get over there, every one of them. Uh, sometimes it takes me a couple days, but I will get back to you on YouTube, uh, Instagram TV, any of those places. I don't always see the messages that you guys send simply because of the way the display works there for the creators. So that's where you can reach me if you need an answer. Uh, if you guys are subscribed to the channel and you're not seeing you know, three videos a week-ish, um, you probably need to hit that notification bell because YouTube isn't always showing my videos to my subscribers these days. If you've already done that, you're still not seeing it, I recommend you sign up for my email. You can do that at the sign up tab at Mr. Guns and Gears Facebook page, which would be my Facebook page. That really sounded weird talking about myself in the third person. Um, <laughs> you can also do it over at MrGunsandGear.com uh, under the sign up tab there as well. And I send out just one email a week with the videos of the week and then a few deals that I find along the way as well that may provide value to you guys guys. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I truly appreciate it. Again, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video.
Thank <laughs> you.